when you're a Newcastle United fan, you expect to see news every day of what's happening at the football club. Uh, is it good? Is it bad? And, and we often compare it to uh, very much a roller coaster ride. Uh, it seems that way again within recent weeks. And now we have another injury to deal with uh, to Alexander Isak, but not the one we originally thought it was. Uh, but we'll get into it in just a moment. Welcome to the Tune Review, everybody. My name's Paul. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you do enjoy the video today, please do give it the thumbs up. And of course, if you're new to the channel and like what you see, come and be part of an incredible community here by hitting that subscribe button. Free to do so, uh, but make sure you hit that notification bell as well so you never miss an upload or a live show. Right, let's start with the news on Alexander Isak first, and it has come out in the press uh, today that he is a doubt for the Fulham game because of a toe injury. Oh, no! Um, now, I don't know the specifics of the toe injury. I know that he hasn't trained a lot this week, um, but we all thought it was, you know, was he suffering from a bit of concussion from, uh, obviously, the Wolves game where the ball hit him in the face and he had the um, bloody nose. Uh, he had to be replaced. Um, it's not that. It's it's a toe injury, and this just adds to the to the problems with Newcastle United, of course, with these very simple injuries uh, that keep players out of games. Now, apparently, it's not serious, uh, but we've heard that a million and one times before about players when they first got injured, and it's never serious. However, it is just a doubt. Isak is a doubt, so he's not completely ruled out of the Fulham game. This is just. He's doubtful. Um, you know, reading through the report, it's just saying he's uh, obviously been hampered by uh, a few injuries since he's been at Newcastle United. Uh, but this one is just a simple toe injury. Um, he was forced off against Wolves, of course, but uh, that was an eye complaint and a bloodied nose. But this is a fresh problem. Um, and now it's, it all depends on what he's going to do. If Isak misses the game, who does he then put in? Because, of course, he brought uh, Gordon into the middle uh, to play as a striker again at Wolves because it looks like he doesn't think Asula's ready for the Premier League, even though he's on the bench. Now, many people can question this decision, including myself. I don't understand why we've bought him, if that's the case. It's a good question. Because we've now possibly got both our main strikers out on Saturday, being Isak and Wilson. And he'll probably start Gordon through the middle, Murphy on the right, and of course Harvey Barnes on the left. Now, whether you think that's a good enough lineup, that's probably all we've got to give at the minute in those positions if Isak doesn't play. But this is the kind of thing that was mentioned in the summer, wasn't it? During the transfer window, you know, have we got enough cover in certain positions? What is going on? And maybe you can look into Paul Mitchell's comments now and say, you know, that the structure wasn't right. And it wasn't fit for purpose. And now we're ending up in the same position that we were last season uh, with some players getting injured and we don't have the cover for them. Because if Asula's there, then I would assume that Asula should start the game as a striker. But look, we know, we know obviously, Anthony Gordon can play as a striker. There's no you know, main issue with that. But what, what I did see against Wolves was when Isak wasn't on the pitch the guys are looking up to cross the ball and there's nobody in the penalty area. You know, Gordon is not an out-and-out -out striker. Uh, he won't get in the same positions that an Isak, uh, a Wilson, or even an Asula, to that matter, will get into. Now, Asula's a big lad. He's big and buggy. He can rough the defence up. Anthony Gordon can't. You know, he's built like a matchstick, Anthony Gordon. He's built for speed. He's not built for the rough and tumble of a centre-forward position. Now, yes, he played that position very well for England under 23s a couple of years back. Did really well, got player of the tournament, etc. Premier League for me is a lot different uh, for what we need Anthony Gordon to do as a striker. Um, I'd rather see Asula there and have Barnes and Gordon on the wings and, and then go from there. You know, Asula can cause problems. Whether he can score goals or not, he can still rough the defenders up, create a bit of space for the wingers. So for me, as a Newcastle fan, I'd probably like to see Asula start rather than Gordon through the middle, but obviously we'll discuss that a bit more uh, on the the, uh, the preview tonight, which is of course at 7 o'clock live on this channel. So don't miss that, it's going to be a very interesting conversation to see who the rest of the guys would play, but you know, if we're being honest and seeing what Eddie Howe did at Wolverhampton, obviously he's going to play uh, Gordon through the middle. Now, as I said, he's not definitely out. You know, so he could he could actually start the game. But given how Isak has played so far this season in a black and white shirt, yes, he's been great for Sweden, hasn't done it in a black and white shirt so far this season. And the last thing we want is for risk 
been out longer with a, another substantial injury. You know, if he's got a toe injury now, if he does further injure that foot, he could be out for weeks. But as I say, it is reported that it's not serious. We've heard that a million times. I just want to see us taking care of things. Obviously, the medical side of things has changed at Newcastle United now, so we may well, um, you know, Isak may well miss the game. If he is injured, keep him out until the Man City game. If he's only going to miss one Premier League game, don't play him against Wimbledon. You know, as soon as should start that game anyway, and then obviously bring him back for the, the massive game against Manchester City, which which is pivotal. You know, that will give us an indication of where we are this season, despite not playing too well. Um, you know, we, we normally step it up against the big boys. So keep him back for that. But let me know what you think. Leave your comments below. I mean, is this just another one of those things, you know, where you just open up the news um, articles online and you see another Newcastle United injury? Um, it's a strange one for me because everybody thought it was concussion related, but it's apparently a toe injury. Uh, so we'll probably not see Isak against Fulham the way it's looking at the minute. Now, uh, we are after a very exciting player, it seems. Um, the striker is a Norway in, uh, striker. He's 18 years old, I do believe. And he is called Sindre Walla Egeli. Um, I've probably battered that name, as I normally do with all the other names, to be fair. Dear me! Um, but he is a Norwegian phenomenon. Uh, described by Craig Hope as uh, widely dubbed as the next Erlen Haaland. Now... As a football fan, I hate that comparison when you say, oh, he's the next this, he's the next that. Whatever player is coming through is their own player. He's not the next Messi, he's not the next Mbappe, whatever it may be. He is his own player. And if he's a very, very good goal scorer, then fantastic. Uh, now, Newcastle do look to be in the front seat for this guy. Uh, he's, he's wanted across Europe. Uh, he's... Very, very similar style of play to Erlen Haaland. Um, now, he was a sp it says here he was an unusually prolific striker at youth and reserve level uh, with 19 goals in 13 appearances in the Norwegian 4th Division uh, with the reserves of Sandhjord. So, the guy can score goals. There's no doubt about it. He's very well built for an 18-year-old. And look, if anything tells you we need to find a striker... It's what's going on at the minute. Because obviously, Eddie Howe isn't fancying Asula yet. We we could be without uh, Isak for Saturday. Wilson, God knows. God only knows with Callum Wilson at the minute. Uh, I suppose we'll get an update on him from Eddie Howe tomorrow. Um, but it's just not happening at the minute for Callum Wilson. Um, so the, the, there is a need for a striker. And, and we knew this. Now, obviously, Asula came in. And he's not the be-all and end-all striker that we originally thought he would be. Um not a really good goal scoring record as Sheffield United. So he's not the prolific striker that we needed to come in and get up and running straight away. So there is a little part of me wishes we'd probably gone for him in the summer, this guy. Uh, you know, banging in goals for fun. Yes, at a very, very much lower level. But when you see a lot of people comparing him, it's not just Craig Holm. It's, it's you know, he's, a lot of people have compared him to Erlen Haaland. There must be something there. Now, a lot of people, again... You know, when they looked at Haaland at that age, we're saying, yeah, but he's, he hasn't come through yet. He hasn't come through yet. And look where Haaland is. You know, we can't afford to miss out on these players if we are going to go for them. And of course, one of Mitchell's speciality is bringing these players in, getting them through the door and performing. So hopefully, uh, Newcastle United could well be um, making a move for him very, very soon. Now, I, I don't know how it works uh, with the transfer window or contractual situation with his Norwegian club. Uh, that will probably be uh, something for the winter. Um, but of course, it also goes on to say uh, both Howe and new sport and director Paul Mitchell will have to agree uh, that the teenage sensation is perfect for the tune and it is unknown if that is yet to happen. <laughs> and so they have to be on the same page to want this guy in the door. Um, but come on, I mean... It, 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 a lot of teams around Europe are, are interested in this guy. Um, and Newcastle at the minute are reported as the front runner. So let's just go and get him. Let's just make sure that we get him before anybody else can have the opportunity and bring him through. Um, but let me know. What do you think? Have you heard of him before? Have you seen any uh, action on YouTube from him? Um, and do you agree when you sort of say this guy is the next such and such? Is that right? Or should you just 
let them come through in their own right and be their own player without comparing them to anybody else. Because for me, that adds a lot of pressure onto the, the player in question. Uh, now, transfers uh, are obviously few and far between for Newcastle at the minute. And it seems so is contract talks. Now, we know that Newcastle United's main priorities to get new contracts signed are Alexander Isak and, of course, Anthony Gordon. Um, now, apparently they are going to step up their attempts over the next couple of months to get these contracts done and dusted and out the way because however long it takes, you know, we know that when the winter window comes along again, these players are going to be linked with God knows who uh, this time around if they haven't signed uh, extensions to the contracts. Now, according to the Northern Echo, the club have made it a key priority to tie both players down to new, improved contracts um, after brilliant 23-24 seasons um, with CEO Darren Neils and Sporting Director Paul Mitchell eager to ste step up talks uh, after initial discussions were held. So this is both players. Both the players have held initial discussions uh, with regards to new contracts, but nothing uh, in depth, it's basically they've touched on it. Um, now, of course, Chelsea have inquired about Isak, as have Arsenal, um, Liverpool, Arsenal again, Man City, all interested in Anthony Gordon. So, you know, with with Anthony, I mean, basically, we're looking at two players who've had very poor starts to the season. Now, I genuinely believe that the problem with Anthony Gordon came from England. You know, when Southgate, obviously now it's come out in the news, kicked off about the accident he had on the bike, uh, etc., etc. Um, gave him very little time on the pitch, two minutes or whatever it was, uh, and then didn't have any interest in him again. And that could be one of the major reasons why, uh, A, we didn't win the Euros, and B, Anthony Gordon's confidence has been knocked. And you, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, but there was glimpses there against Wolves, wasn't there, that he was getting his head back in the game. Uh, but as for Isak, you know, I don't know. We're not playing to his strengths, that's quite clear, but he just doesn't seem with it at the minute. Um, are these contract talks over his head? I mean, is it, you know, you've got to consider all of these things um, as to why they're not playing very well at the moment. But listen, they're not the only two. You know, we a lot of the team haven't really hit the ground running yet this season. Um Gordon's deal due to expire in the summer of 2026. Now, yes, that's practically two years away, but still, in football and terms, that's not a long contract, uh, meaning that Newcastle will soon have to end a potentially dangerous territory over the next six months if a new improved contract isn't agreed. Because if it gets to a year and a half away and a no new contract isn't agreed, Newcastle certainly can't take the risk of letting Anthony Gordon go for a free. So they will have to, they will really have to try and get a contract signed. Um, Isak's contract, uh, we've got four years left on that. Now, many people look at that and say, well, there's four years left on it. He can't go anywhere. It doesn't really matter, does it? I mean, four years on the wages he's on. An improved contract will certainly keep him at the club. Uh, no doubt about that. Um, there's a feeling his salary must be increased to fend off inevitable offers in the next few years. Show me the money. And that's that's right. You know, you've got a player like Isak. If he finds his form again and starts banging them in like he did last season, you know, Newcastle are going to want this guy signed up. There's no no question. You know, they'll want to offer him a new deal on a better wage structure to keep him at Newcastle United, or his head will be turned. Um, so those are the two. I know we spoke about Longstaff last night on the live show, but those are the two contracts I think that really Newcastle are turning their attention to certainly over the next few months. Um, and, and personally speaking, I'd, I'd love to um, celebrate doing a new show with them both signing uh, extensions. But we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, but there you go. Thanks very much for watching. Let me know in the comments uh, below what you think about the Isak toe injury uh, and, of course, everything else that we spoke about on the show. But don't forget to give it the thumbs up. And, of course, if you're new to the channel, please do subscribe. It's free to do so. Uh, but don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload. Uh, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you, if you're watching this on Thursday, we'll see you on the live uh, preview show tonight for the Fulham game. But in the meantime, have a fantastic Thursday afternoon, guys. Take care.